Hi everybody, it's Pastor Pete from Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Normally we worship on Saturdays at 5 p.m. and on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. But because Illinois is currently sheltering in place, now you can worship anytime you want, right at home. Even though we are practicing social distance, we are never distant from God. We are never distant from God. And in fact, even though it feels like we are distant from one another, in fact, in a lot of ways, we are joined together. Uh, so I welcome all of you who are parishioners, who are connected to our church family here at Our Saviors. And I welcome all of you around the globe who are using this as your time of worship today. Even while we are sheltering in place, our worship team and our pastors are working hard to be able to bring you this worship experience. And so today our preacher is Pastor Gail Heike, one of our pastors at Our Saviors. Our children's message will be Pastor Rhonda Pruitt. And again, I'm Pastor Pete welcoming you here. Enjoy the wonderful music, enjoy God's word, and we begin now with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls us to the cross. Amen. If you were to keep watch over our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life we have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. In baptism, God opens our eyes to see the truth of who we are, God's own beloved children. God marks us with the cross and calls us to bear witness to the light of Christ in our daily lives. Rise up in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen.
guys, I am looking for Pastor Pete because I got to do my children's sermon and he knows where my things are. So someone told me he was down here, so I'm going to look for him. Come along with me while we find him. Oh, thank goodness. Pastor Pete. Hey, Pastor Pete. Um, I'm looking for my Play-Doh. Have you seen it? I gotta do my children's sermon and they're waiting on me, so I can really use some help. Do you know where it is? Right, you left the Play-Doh in the worship space. Oh, yeah? It, it's near the front of the church. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, Let's absolutely. go. He said it was up front, but I can't really find it. Um, I've looked everywhere. So, I'm not sure. I think I better go back and ask him again, because he said he saw it up here. Hey, Pastor Pete. I looked up front, and uh, I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere. You said look up front. So I went and looked up front, but I just can't find that Play-Doh. I need it for that children's sermon. I said it's near the front. Near the front. It's in the second pew. Oh, near the front. You'll I see it's you near the front. Up exactly front. like I said, near the front, in the second pew. Near the front. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I came back because Pastor Pete said that they were here in the second row. So I'm going to take a look in the racks here. And there they are, right where he said they were. The last time I played with them, I left them there. I love Play-Doh. Oh my goodness, I'm glad I found it. And I'm glad I went back to him to get further instructions because he said, go up to the front. But he didn't really mean the front, he said up near the front. And so now that I had second instructions, I knew how to look for them better. I bet you guys have seen a lot of that too, doing stuff over and over and over again. I bet your parents are watching a lot of news stories and it seems like they're saying the same stuff over and over and over again. And just when you think you can watch your favorite show, here comes another news story saying the same stuff over again. Well, I want you to know that it's not because the news people are saying anything wrong, and it's not because your parents didn't hear it right the first time. Sometimes you have to go back and watch something again or see something again so that you can have better instructions. It's called clarity. Clarity helps you to see things clearer than the first time you looked at them. Sometimes glasses help us get clarity, or sometimes further instructions help us get clarity. Today, in the Bible story, Jesus talks to a blind man whom he heals. And what happens is the blind man is told to go wash himself, and he does. And the first time he washes himself, he could see shapes, but he couldn't really see clear. The second time Jesus tells him to go back and wash, he could see very clearly. He had to go back to Jesus for a second touch and further instructions so that he could see as clear as day. In Bible times, you weren't always able to use a CNI dog because there weren't any or a stick or any type of things to help you. You had to rely on other people's help. You had to rely on other people to give you the right instructions and you had to be able to listen and hear very clearly in order to follow well. Well, it's a lot like that for us these days. We're away from each other, but the news and cameras, those, all of those things help us to see clearly what we didn't see before. Just like me and my Play-Doh when I went back to Pastor Pete. God promises us in the scripture as well as every day that we can always return to him for further instructions when we're not sure about what to do. And so in these times when you feel unsure and when you feel like you just don't know, everything's the same, nothing's changing, it's important to know that God is always waiting for you to come back and find out what more you need to know, and he'll help you see clearly. We're looking forward to seeing you when we get back in worship space, but it was great spending time with you today when we went to look for Pastor Pete. I hope I can find him and tell him that I found my Play-Doh. Have a great Sunday. Mark chapter 8. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. 
He took the blind man by the hand and he led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and he said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then Jesus sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Whoa, Jesus, step back, six feet. These are days of social distancing. Should you really be out there with those crowds? And I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be touching that guy. And with your spit? Yikes! We live in interesting times with health precautions and with our own fears and insecurities. Trying to keep things in perspective for our lives, for our family and friends, for our faith. And so we have this gospel story today about Jesus who himself lived in interesting times. It's a story of hope and encouragement for us as, as we look to Jesus who, who reaches out to touch and to heal and to reassure and to offer hope, to bring faith and to call us and to call others to serve and to share in his name. Today, Jesus reaches out to us, and, and sometimes, as with the man in the story, we need a second touch. We can't seem to see beyond these present days. We have a hard time seeing just where we may be in the next weeks and months to come. So we need a, we need a second touch, a second touch to bless our faith with, with vision and with a greater clarity. Now, there are several stories in the Gospel that describe Jesus healing people who are blind, restoring their sight. I think that this is the only one where it takes a second touch. Jesus and his disciples, traveling along to Bethsaida, people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. No gloves, no hand sanitizer. Jesus touches him with his own saliva and then asks if this man can see anything. Well, the man says, I think I can see people, but they look like trees walking. So Jesus touches him again, and his vision clears, and Jesus sends him on home. This happens after Jesus has fed a multitude, been challenged by the Pharisees, the religious establishment, and just before, he asks his own disciples to declare their faith and their following. Who do you say that I am? He will ask them. And then he tells them that he will be led to rejection, to suffering, to death on the cross. Will the disciples need a second touch to see where Jesus is leading? Will we? Will we need a second touch? Because what is it that is obscuring our vision, that is obscuring our faith these days? What challenges are we facing that obscure our ability to see Jesus clearly and to follow him? Well, sometimes it is hard to see. It's fear that clouds our vision, grief that changes our focus, illness, disaster, pandemic, just the words panic our spirits. And then there's the attitude of, of thinking that perhaps we may somehow be immune to all this, that there are others who should be staying home. There's a kind of self-centeredness when we are grabbing for all that we get for ourselves without regard to others. Sometimes it's hard to see. We need Jesus, to touch us and to clarify our vision, to see again, perhaps just to open our eyes to see that, that the birds are back and they're singing and the trees are budding and the grass is trying to go green and the crocuses and the green sprouts are just popping out all over the place. Can we see signs of life? And can we see the signs of God's help and care for us 
and for others? Can we see that there, there are folks who are offering help, who are sharing, who are praying, who are encouraging others? Can we see them? And can we be them? We are touched by Jesus. We're granted vision to, to see people walking, walking about like trees walking. Or maybe we see them masked and gloved and in hazmat suits. We need a second touch to see beyond this and to reach beyond this, to reach beyond with phone calls, to stay in touch and, and personal support and, and with our prayers. Let Jesus' second touch bless us to recognize Jesus, to see him and to know in him our help and our salvation, the one who will lift us from despair and lead us to the fullness of life. Let his second touch bless us to follow him and to love him and to trust him. Let his second touch allow him to live in me and I in him and to let his touch make a difference in my life and in our lives and in the life of the world. And we, we will see that difference. I believe that we will begin again to see God's leading and God's will beyond this coronavirus. Anne Graham Lotz writes in her book, Expecting to See Jesus. She writes, sometimes God's glory is wrapped in hard circumstances or ugly obstacles, and it just never occurs to us that within those life-shaking events comes a fresh revelation of God. Let there be a second touch for us to see Jesus more clearly, leading us, loving us, even if things are, are not so very clear these days, to see Jesus as the one who loves us and who leads us, and, as, and the one who calls us to be God's own, to walk as a child of the light, to see and to share the blessings that will come, sometimes disguised but God's blessings for us and for others and for this old world as we look to Jesus for hope and life.
these times, we turn to God, who is gracious and merciful, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of your people and of the world to see your love, your guidance, your leading, your care for us and for others. Hold us all in safety and in care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, help us to care for your creation, for all living things. Provide rich soil for crops to grow in spring rains. As the seasons turn, turn our hearts again to you as you call us to care for all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, help us to see one another as your beloved children. Help us to see you in the face of others especially those most vulnerable. Let your light shine through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Raise up leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and care for all. Frustrate the efforts of those who seek to cause fear, terror, or violence. Be with all those rebuilding after storms, tornadoes, and natural occurrences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, you care for our needs. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, therapists, researchers, and all who tend to human bodies. We pray for all of those impacted by the coronavirus and for all those sick or in special need. We ask for your comfort for all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, hear these and all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us online. We will see you next week, if not earlier. I just wanted to let you know that what our Lenten theme was this year, uh, before the coronavirus uh, scare, the coronavirus pandemic, the Lenten theme was the wilderness. And so this was supposed to be a reminder of how we are all journeying together through the wilderness. And so there's the sand, remembering Jesus' uh, temptations in the wilderness. There was sticks, as we talked about uh, John 3.16, Jesus giving his life on the cross for us. And our theme for today, as we heard about the blind man being healed, and he, he said, I can see the people, but they look like trees that are walking. And so the theme today was supposed to be a whole bunch of different leaves. And so for my sending today, I just want to say, um, make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> but actually, don't, don't leave. Don't go anywhere because you're supposed to shelter in, in place. You're supposed to stay at home. So instead, I will say, make like a tree and, and grow. Make like a tree and continue to grow. Even when we're stuck at home, we can still grow as disciples. We can still grow in faith. And so keep on tuning in every week with us as we join together for worship. And so let me close with the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make like a tree and get out of here.